Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on conducting a square root transformation using SPSS. Oftentimes in counseling research, we look to conduct parametric statistics, and one of the common assumptions for parametric statistics is that we're testing variables that are normally distributed. Now, there are a few ways to check to see if a variable is normally distributed, including taking a look at the skewness and kurtosis statistics. And sometimes when a variable is too positively skewed or too negatively skewed to be used in a parametric statistic, we can conduct what's called a transformation. There are a few types of transformations. In this video, I'll be reviewing the square root transformation. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data view here in SPSS, I have a variable has 100 values, 100 scores, and I know this has a positive skew. And I have another variable here, also with 100 values, that has a negative skew. So first, I'm going to take a look at the positively skewed variable. So I go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, explore, and I'm going to move the positively skewed variable to the dependent list, and over under the statistics button, I'm going to leave descriptives checked off. Under plots, I'm going to uncheck stem and leaf and check off histogram. I'm also going to add the normality plots with tests. Click continue. I'm going to make no changes under options. Then I'll click OK. We can see we have the descriptives for the variable labeled positive skew. We can see down here for skewness, we have a value of 1.025, a standard error of 0.241. And then below this table, we have the test of normality. And these, there's the uh, Kolmogorov Smirnoff, as well as the Shapiro Wilk. I generally interpret the Shapiro Wilk as opposed to the Kolmogorov Smirnoff. But in this case, no matter which one you interpret, uh, you have a significant value here. So the p value is below 0 0.05 for the KS test and the Shapiro Wilk. So we would assume this distribution is non normal and possibly a candidate for a square root transformation. So when looking at the skewness, there's a number of rules you can apply to determine whether the skewness is a problem or not. The rule that I typically use is that I look to see that the skewness, the absolute value of the skewness is not greater than one. Absolute value not greater than one. So in this case, the absolute value of the skewness statistic is greater than one. So I would say this distribution is positively skewed so much so that it could interfere with running a parametric statistic. Any value above zero represents a positive skew, just as any value below zero represents a negative skew. But the values we're looking out for here would be a skewness of greater than one or less than negative one. Another common guideline is the absolute value can't be greater than 0.8. And still another uses the standard error and indicates that if the skewness value is greater than two times the standard error, that the skewness is too great. So in this case, uh, whether you apply the rule with the um, absolute value greater than one, absolute value greater than 0.8, or the statistic greater than two times the value of standard error, under all three of those rules, this distribution is too positively skewed. And before I run a transformation, I'd like to look at the histogram to get an idea of what the positive skew looks like for this particular distribution. And you can see from the histogram, it's pretty clear that the tail goes to the right. So we're dealing with the positive skew here. If the tail were moving to the left, that would be a negative skew. So to move forward with a square root transformation for this variable, I'm going to go back to the data view, although I don't have to. I can 
run the same analysis from the output view. I'm going to go to transform, compute variable, and first we need to name a target variable because it's going to create a new variable for the transformation. So let's call this one sqrt square root and then ps for positive skew. Then if we look at the function group here on the right under arithmetic, we move down a bit, we can see the sqrt function at square root. Just double click that. And in the case of a positively skewed distribution, this is fairly straightforward. We just put this variable in the parentheses and click OK. And as you can see here in the data view, we have a new variable that was created, a square root ps. So this is the square root of all the values in the positive skew variable. So now let's analyze this new variable and compare it to the non-transformed variable. So we'll go to Analyze, again to Descriptive Statistics, Explore. And I'm going to leave the positive skew variable in the dependent list and just add the transformed variable. I'm going to leave all the other settings the same and click OK. And we can see the original skewedness value for a positive skew variable, 1.025. And we can see now at the transformed variable, it's 0.729. So we have corrected the skewness to bring it within an acceptable range. Moving down to the test of normality, however, we can see here that we still have a significant value for the KS test and the Shapiro-Wilk. So in a case like this, where the skewness was corrected through the transformation, but we still do not have normality, even in the transformed variable, you may want to consider a log 10 transformation. And I have a separate video that covers that. So now let's take a look at how to work with a negatively skewed distribution. And we know that the negative skew variable here is negatively skewed. So I'm going to go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Explore. I'm going to move the uh, positive skew and the other transform variable out of the dependent list and put the negative skew variable in. And again, leave all the settings the same. And we can see that under the uh, all three of the guidelines that I mentioned earlier, that this distribution is too negatively skewed. Right? So the absolute value of the skewness statistic is greater than 1, negative uh, 1.076. We can see that both the Komogorov Smirnov and Shapiro Wilk tests uh, have statistical significance. So we're going to assume this is a variable that is not normally distributed. Right? This, both these values are less than 0.05. And again, looking at the histogram, it's pretty clear we are working with a negative skew. We have a negatively skewed distribution. So again, this variable is potentially a good candidate for transformation. I'm going to move back to the data view and then to transform and compute variable. And I'm going to delete uh, the numeric expression here I had him before. And I'm going to call this new variable square root uh, negative skew, ns. And I'm going to add the square root from the function group here. But when working with the negative skew, before we can take the square root of the variable, we have to do what's called a reflection. And in order to do reflection, we need to know the maximum value in the variable. So if I move back to the output view, move back to the descriptives for the negative skew variable, I can see that the maximum is 72.5. I want to keep that in mind, 72.5. So moving back here to the compute variable dialog, we can take care of the square root calculation and the reflection in one line of code here. 
and we'll start by typing the maximum value, 72.5, then adding 1 to that value, then subtracting the negative skew variable. So this takes care of the reflection and the square root. So we'll now click OK and take a look at the results by first moving over to the data view and you can see a new variable is created here, square root ns. And then we'll analyze it using descriptive statistics and explore. And I'm going to leave, leave the negative skew in the dependent list. I'm going to add the square root of the negative skew variable. Again, all these settings on the right will remain the same. And click OK. Again, we can see the original skewness, negative 1.076. And now the skewness is 0 0.202. And if we look at the test of normality, we can see that the KS test and the Shapiro-Wilk tests return different results in this case. If we interpret the Kolmogorov Smirnov test, we have a non-statistically significant finding. So we would assume normality. We would assume this is a normally distributed variable. Uh, the uh, transform variable, that is, would be considered normally distributed. But the transform variable would not be considered normally distributed if we're looking at the Shapiro-Wilk, because this is a st statistically significant finding, 0 0.022. That's statistically significant. So we would assume from the Shapiro-Wilk that we're working with a variable that is not normally distributed. So in this particular case, we had a very good correction as far as the skewness, uh, brought it from negative 1.076 to 0 0.202, but only on one of the tests of normality did we have a result to indicate a normally distributed variable. So in this case, you could look at a log 10, or again, uh, some researchers interpret the KS and not the Shapiro-Wilk. So in that case, uh, you would have a normally distributed variable to work with. So there are a few possibilities here, depending on what guidelines and tests you use to determine normality. I hope you found this video on conducting a square root transformation in SPSS to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.